Hello, my friends. I'm on vacation right now. I'm in beautiful Southern California. I'm here for 10 days and right now I'm in Huntington Beach where I used to live for two years and it's actually my first time that I come out here to visit and I'm super excited. For these 10 days I'll be riding the Harley Davidson Nightster. Oh, doesn't it look beautiful? And in this video of course I'm going to tell you how it rides also over a longer period of time because I'm going to be doing lots of, lots of riding and then I'll tell you how it felt and also give you some of my favorite roads here to ride so if you ever come here you have to check these out. to bring back this Harley Davidson Nightster. It has been an amazing week with it. I have to say I had so much fun riding it. When I first got on it, it I felt super comfortable on it. There was like really it was super uncomplicated. The handling is really easy and uh, let's just start with the engine because the engine is a brand new one. Actually, there's still the Revolution Max in the new Sportster S and in the Pan America, but there it has 1050 cc and here we have 975 cc. So it's the lowest displacement uh, current Harley Davidson that's out there on the market right now. And I have to say, I really enjoyed the engine a lot, even though it doesn't have that crazy punch that we know from some other Harleys, but it's still, especially from like 3,500 to like 4,000 RPM, then it really has all that punch that you really want. And from down below, it's, you know, it takes a little and then it like pushes you. And I don't know, I love that feeling. We still have a V-twin, which I love, at 60 degrees. The engine sits down very low, so it makes the center of gravity quite low. We have the tank under the seat. So this here is the airbox, not the tank. So just be aware of that. So when you open this, um, this you can do with the key. By the way, it's keyless ignition. So um, you just have to have this in your pocket. When you get closer to the bike, you can start it. But for opening the seat, you need this physical key. And then you just open this. Ah. Okay, sorry. And then you just uh, fill up the gas. By the way, here's also the tools for the adjusting the preload of the rear spring, but I'll get back to that later. Yeah, and then, so as I said, center of gravity, very low. Handling, very, very easy. And it comes standard with three different riding modes. We have a rain mode, a sport mode, and a road mode. And when I first hopped on it and I was riding the first day, I was all in road mode. And I kind of like, yeah, this is a nice engine. It's powerful, but it didn't give me like, you know, big emotions. But when I turned it in a sport mode the day after, I'm like, wow, this is really fun. You can really ride it fast and sporty around the corners. And uh, yeah, so for me, my favorite mode is the sport mode especially when you uh, have this aggressive position on the bike. But of course, if you want to take it more easy or for everyday life, then probably the road mode is your better option. And then when it rains, for example, or you're you know, not a very experienced rider, uh, you can take the rain mode, which limits the power to uh, like, I think 15% less power. And, uh, but for me, I felt like the engine, you know, it was, too weak I think the, the rain mode so I, I prefer actually the road mode but especially the sport mode and as a modern Harley it also has traction control which I really like uh, you can disengage it with a long press on this button but you also have ABS of course and also um, a slipper clutch and let's get to the sitting position. So we have a seat height of 705 millimeters. So it's very low to the ground. I can easily reach the ground. I'm one meter and 69 centimeters or five, six. And I like the position of the footrests, which are like in the middle here. My knee angle is very 
yeah, something between sporty and super relaxed, so it's not in the front. I personally don't love it to be in the front, but of course, as accessory, you can get these. I clicked through the catalog and you could get so many things. I think 67 accessory parts you can get for it to be really in, um, customize this bike. And then you're stretched qu uh, quite forward to the handlebars. So if you have very short arms, then you could get an accessory um, handlebar that is, comes closer to you. But I really like that position because it's like, um, it's relaxed, but it's also aggressive. And I really enjoyed that and makes steering so easy because it's quite wide. Also, um, especially in corners, we have quite slim tires. So we have 190, 19 in the front and 150, 80, 16 in the rear. So steering, steering is very, very easy going and um, even in very twisty roads it was never a problem to turn it in combined with the wide handlebars. As I said, you can ride it really sporty and um, yeah, so it really has a good sportster um, soul, I would say. So you can ride it relaxed but also sporty, which I really like. And I must say, I'm very impressed by the long distance comfort of this bike. I did like four or five hours in one ride in the saddle, just a little gas stop in between. And um, it was so comfortable, like nothing hurt. And I had it before with cruisers when you sit like with the uh, butt to the back, then it started hurting after some time. But with this, it really didn't. So this made me really happy because I was concerned first if I should really ride these long distances. But as I said, very, very comfortable seat and uh, no issues with that. Also, the engine has almost no mentionable vibrations anymore. So some of you might say, oh, I like the vibrations, but I actually, especially on long distances, I really enjoy that it just um, didn't vibrate much. And also it doesn't develop a lot of heat, the engine. So even like in this California weather, it's super warm and I was stuck in traffic no issues here because with some other bikes I like burned my legs and I really didn't like it but that's very um, great here but I mean when you maneuver the bike around and you have ridden it before just be aware don't touch the exhaust pipe because that gets really hot and I touched it once and I really burned my legs so just be careful at that part. <laughs> is under the seat we have 11.7 liters uh, that fit in there so it's not a lot but I tried it out and I really squeezed it um, so I got a hundred and thirty five miles out of it I think this is around 215 kilometers so actually it's not too bad so the fuel consumption Harley says it's around 5.5 liters per hundred kilometers but I think it, mine was even a little lower, even though I wasn't riding super slow. I was actually sometimes riding quite fast on that thing, which I really enjoyed that you really can ride it fast. Also the footrests, they don't scratch that fast. Of course you can scratch them, but I, like, I really like on this bike that you can get around it because I'm a person I really don't like when the footrests scratch. So when I'm on a, uh, on a cruiser bike, I just adapt to it and I just take the corners differently and don't like push it down because then you scratch and I don't know, I get scared easily then. <laughs> um, what have I not mentioned? The brakes are really good, <laughs> surprisingly, because I had cruisers that where the brakes really didn't work well, where the pressure point wasn't great, but they were super okay. So. It always stopped me in time. We have a Brembo brake in the front with 320 millimeter disc. In the rear we have a 260 millimeter disc. And yeah, it always stopped me in time. And believe me, there were situations where I really had to stop abruptly, especially when like lane splitting. And that's the part I didn't like so much because these uh, rear view mirrors are very wide out. So it makes the whole vehicle wider. So when lane splitting in California, it's legal by the way. 
it just sometimes gave me trouble to lane split. But as I said, there's many accessories you can get and there's other solutions so it doesn't add up on the side so much. So I would probably uh, use that. But the visibility on these uh, rear, view mirror, rear view mirrors is really good. Speaking of visibility, um, what I also really like, so of course we all have LED lights here on this bike and the headlight um, gives you such good visibility at night. The Nightster gives you good visibility at the night. <laughs> Makes sense. So I really were at places where it got super dark when I was riding through the desert and I could see very well. So thumbs up on that. It's a very wide angle light. For the suspension, we have a 41 millimeter telescopic fork by Shova in the front uh, with, I think, 114 millimeter. Um, I'll check out these Harleys, film them. Huh. Okay. <laughs> All right, so for suspension, we have a 41 millimeter telescopic fork by Shova in the front and um, two outer springs um, with, I think, 76 millimeters of suspension travel in the rear, which is not a lot. So especially when you go over bigger bumps, you feel it in your back and especially sometimes it even lifts you out of the saddle. Uh, we know that from cruisers, especially from sportsters, they don't have a lot of suspension travel in the rear. But, it's, but I was impressed with the fork because it stayed really stable, especially in turns. It made you really ride precisely and gives you a good feedback. So I think the, the fork is done really, really well and it kept the front stable even if you were going over bumps. All right, what have I not mentioned yet? So the bike is available in three different color options. So this here is the gunmetal gray. There's also a red line red and there's a vivid black. And this gray and the red, uh, I think cost like 280 bucks extra. And yeah, let's get to the price, which is of course not cheap. We have a, a price of 15,000, I think in Germany, uh, around almost 18,000 in Austria. And of course, you have to check in which country you are, how much it is there. Um, but yeah, I really loved it. I loved riding it. I had a lot of fun on it. You can ride it sporty. You can ride it in a relaxed way. It's not intimidating. The engine is strong and powerful, but it's not, you know, as I said, not intimidating. And it's, uh, you can ride it sporty, but also if you're not such an experienced rider, you can also take it easy on that or just adjust to the um, conditions that you're riding in. And I also love the look of it. So if you're a diehard Harley fan, you might now say, oh, shut up, it's not a real sportster anymore. But you know, every, everyone's taste is different and I really like their approach of having, I, I think it's authentic sportster, but you know, just a little bit more modern. And I do appreciate the features that they put in, that it has traction control, that it has ABS, that it has a slipper clutch. So, and even the riding modes. So I do think, especially if you ride it more often, you will appreciate these features and this better suspension and the more comfort that you get on this newer bike opposed to like an older Harley. All right, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, yeah, I forgot to mention my favorite roads to ride here in California because I lived here for two years. So Malibu riding is always awesome. I would recommend to go on a weekday because there is less traffic. On the weekends it can, can get quite busy, especially also with sport, sports cars and sports cars and motorcycles sometimes don't match so well on the roads, I would say, but also Palomar Mountain, amazing. I went there this time twice and it's just always spectacular, beautiful views. If you go there in winter, just be aware there might be snow on top and it can get very chilly. But the views are, as I said, very spectacular. It's closer to San Diego. And then here in LA area, I would also recommend Angel's Crest. It's awesome to also ride fast. I see a lot of sports bikes there. I was there on sports bikes and naked bikes. Um, it's, it's basically like a racetrack through the mountain. Also very nice is Glendora Mountain Road. And I would say Idlewild Road if you go more inland towards Palm Springs. There's many more roads, but these are like my, my recommendations for you now if you ever come here and go right here. You can also leave a comment, of course, if you have other suggestions. 
So for now, I, yeah, I'm gonna probably start heading back soon because it is mid of November or end of November basically. So sun is setting at around 4.45 already. So yeah, days are shorter, but still beautiful weather outside. And it was just a blast riding here in California again and had a great time here. So take care, always ride safe and see you at the next video. Bye-bye.